All right, to me, this is going to be a real important video. I hope everybody uh, that watches it comments on it. Uh, I hope that somebody at EA Sports sees it. I hope they read the comments and understand that a lot of people aren't letting me speak for them anymore. The community of people on YouTube, on message boards, and on forums that are displaying publicly the issues they have with EA Sports marketing this game and Madden as a whole are getting larger. It's no longer one or two people. It's a lot of people that have had enough. Now, EA Sports, I really don't think you have any respect for your consumer. I think you don't care about us as consumers, and I think it's articles like this that prove it. I think it's sad that I can blindly read your articles about games that haven't came out yet and change the dates, and a person reading that would not be able to disertain what version I was talking about. For example, this article that I'm going to dictate out of is from 2007. The game issues you bring up are still prevalent today. And again, if I were to change the dates and dictate this to someone, they would have a hard time telling me what version of Madden I was talking about being promoted. The funny things here are, they come out and say that this is back to basics approach to on-field play. And some of the things they talk about are quite telling. The fact that this is going to be Madden's third appearance on the PlayStation, or excuse me, on the Xbox 360, the second appearance on the PlayStation 3, and how the developers are doing everything they can do to make sure the next generation of gaming allows them to add things they always wanted to add into the game, but perhaps weren't maybe because of technology available to be there, such as gang tackles, owner mode, the lateral and updated fatigue system, improved defensive AI, now, granted, some of those still plague Madden today, but some of them have been fixed. However, the big ones, like gang tackles, we were told about last year with ProTac. As a matter of fact, when they talk about branching tackling systems, it sounds strikingly similar to how ProTac was sold to us. I'll go into that a little bit later on, but the first thing they talk about is overhauling animations. They talk about the fact that wide receivers will now stay in bounds when they could stay in bounds. Gives the player a little bit more control. They talk about the fact that this branching tackling animation is going to affect every aspect of the game. For example, you could spin with a uh, running back and have two defenders knock into each other because you spun. They talk about, again, how it's going to affect everything, down to the blocking. They talk about how that is going to allow the player, as the user in that sense, to have more control than ever. They talk about tackles being added on to at any point from an offensive and defensive standpoint. Again, that's almost exactly how ProTac was sold to us. If you go to the next page, and, and they that's quoted right here. They talk about gang tackles that have been missing from NFL 2007 and the videos that they put out to show you that they're in 2008 in trying to promote this product. On the next page, they talk about the rocket catch. They call it the jetpack catch. They talk about it being taken out of the game. They talk about possession receivers acting like possession receivers, having specific animations. They talk about players acting like they would in real life. And they give an example. I'll go through them all. But the first one they give is the fixes to zone coverage that eliminates money plays. Again, something we were told last year by Ian Cummings. Money plays were going to be gone. Again, this is something when promoting Madden 2008, at this GameSpot article, EA allows them to come out and say. So they talk about John Lynch acting like John Lynch, that the AI will recognize John Lynch as your defender and be timid about throwing across the middle, not just because it's John Lynch, but because there's all these new animations, this whole new AI system. They specifically talk about the differences between Peyton Manning and Rex Grossman. They talk about how Peyton Manning will be able to tear your team apart and Rex Grossman really won't be able to do anything, apparently. To me, that's very funny because I saw Versus put up a video today where Peyton Manning threw into quad coverage with four of the best defenders in the game, and he threw to a right guard. That is not demonstrating what they're saying in selling Madden 2008. They talk about the difference between Warwick Dunn and Lorenzo Neal in terms of running style. They talk about zone blocking and stretch blocking being fixed. The stretch play still doesn't work in Madden. They talk about fatigue setting in on players. How running around with Mike Vick 
will really destroy Vic in terms of being a quarterback. They talk about how the temperature and weather will affect the game, specifically how Mile High Stadium will play differently than all the other stadiums simply because of the, the elevation change. And perhaps one of the more funny things they say is that they're going to focus on gridiron action first and foremost and again take a back to basics approach to the game. So this, again, a 2007 article brings up a lot of points that were brought up in trying to sell Madden 2010 and which will probably ultimately be brought up in trying to sell Madden 2011. Now, in terms of 2010, Here's an article with Mark Tumel, who just came on to EA Sports and working on Madden 11. This is an article, an interview, really, that they did with him that I think is quite telling when you, again, compare it to that 2007 article that they helped GameSpot do. Now, they ask Mark, what makes EA Sports a good fit for you? And he replies with, I love to learn. I have long marveled at EA Sports and their ability to ship quality games on a yearly schedule. That's incredibly hard. To me, that's not something they've done. He goes on to say that he's marveled at how EA management and marketing has understood their consumer and then targeted them with appropriate content. That he's a huge sports fan, he loves making video games, and trusts that the senior management team will navigate the very difficult and challenging waters of game development as they move toward in this rapidly changing business, that no other publisher has the vision and instincts to capitalize the way EA does. Well, I would again beg to differ. I've been making videos for quite some time. I know Apex has been making videos for quite some time, and I'm not saying that we're the sole voice of the consumer, but I understand that many consumers agree with him and myself in terms of gameplay issues, and again, I showed you an article in 2007 where they've yet to address issues four years later. They were aware of them, and they never fixed them. In closing, they ask him in the upcoming year, what technology will have the most impact on sports video games? And again, this is going to harp right back to what I initially said in terms of user control. His response is, the animation in our games are becoming more fluid, lifelike, and more organic when the user manipulates his controller. The days of one trigger animation that you can't break out of once you press a button are over. And the new era of real-time responsive control is upon us. Players have never had as much control as they're about to have, and it's awesome. Well, Mark, my response to that would be, that sounds wonderful. And certainly, that's what we all want in a video game. But I have to question if you're talking about Madden, because to me, that sounds like what I've heard Backbreaker talking about. Are you talking about EA Sports when you make that statement in the future video games? Because... You were talking about that, well, rather, your company was talking about that in 2007. And maybe EA Sports is at its limitation with Madden, but there are other video game companies that have came, like 2K Sports, and went in terms of football and provided them, us, the consumers, with the product that was most like what we wanted. You say that EA Sports has listened. You say that EA Sports has made changes. Yet apparently you never went back and researched what EA Sports has said before in terms of what was wrong with their game, what they were fixing with their game, and what never got done with their game. So again, I uh, hope you guys comment on this. I hope you guys read these articles, give your opinion on them. I hope you pass the video along if you find it informative or you think it's correct. And again, I really do hope somebody at EA Sports watches this and goes back and takes a look at that article and asks the question to the upper staff at EA Sports, if we knew about these issues in 2007, why are they still in our game? Why cannot we still provide our consumers with the product we promised them four years ago? And how can we justify charging full price for the past three or four years knowing our product is still broken?